Happy 4th of July weekend, uh, and welcome to Middletown Presbyterian Church this morning. We're glad that you are here with us. Uh, some things to bring to your attention. It is a beautiful day outside, and so everyone is invited to join us uh, right outside the front of the church uh, for Punch on the Lawn immediately following worship. So come join us for some refreshments there. Uh, we also have some things coming up this month. Uh, we have the, the youth and adult uh, barbecue and softball game uh, on uh, Sunday. Sunday, July 10th. Uh, the softball game will be across the street uh, on the field at Indian Lane. Uh, so kind of, even, even if you don't want to play, come on out and uh, cheer on those who are playing and have a good time and then come back over here uh, for a barbecue following that. Uh, we also have a Vacation Bible School coming up July 11th through the 15th. So if you have uh, if you are a kid, you have kids, you have uh, grandkids, you have neighbor kids, you have kids you just uh, picked up along the way uh, on the street, bring them to VBS. Uh, and you can sign up. Uh, also, if, there's, if, if you're available, uh, I'm sure Chris, can, uh, Chris Benson can find some job for you to do, uh, either leading up to VBS uh, or during the week. Uh, so just see Chris Benson uh, about that. Also, we have a youth car wash coming up on July 16th, right up the street at the uh, Sunoco. Uh, so if you need your car washed, uh, come by and support our youth. Uh, and our next uh, Middletown uh, family movie night is coming up on Friday, July 22nd. Uh, those are at 6.30 uh, when we have them on a Friday night. I'm have, I had heard that possibly we might be watching The Jungle Book, but I haven't gotten confirmation of that yet, so stay tuned uh, to find out what the movie is, uh, but that will be on June 22nd. I think that's all of our announcements for this morning, uh, so let's begin our worship with our call to worship. Please stand if you are able and join me in the call to worship. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. For he is our God.
be seated. God's word tells us that all we like sheep have gone astray. We've each turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. So let us come before God's throne of mercy and grace to confess our sins using the prayer of confession found in your bulletin. Let us pray together. Almighty and merciful God, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent. According to your promises declared to the world in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O merciful God, for his sake, that we may live a holy, just, and humble life to the glory of your holy name. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. seated. Today's Old Testament lesson comes from Ezekiel 34, verses 11 through 16, and can be found on Pew Bible page 623. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. The word of the Lord. Let us stand together and sing our praise chorus, Build Your Kingdom Here. The words are on the insert in your bulletin. Oh, boy. 
may be seated. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this beautiful day, for this new opportunity to gather in your name uh, and to worship you, uh, to spend some time in your word. And Lord, we invite you to be present here today, uh, to pour out your spirit on this place, to fill our hearts and our minds, uh, that we might hear from you today. And Lord, we pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, it is 4th of July weekend, the weekend in which we celebrate our country's birth. Uh, and while I, I really hesitate to, uh, to agree with Mr. Trump, I do have to say that I think we have seen better days. We have been greater. Currently, we have seen all sorts of terrible things. Uh, terrorism, mass murders, uh, violence all over the place. Uh, and the reality is that we, the church, have the power. We, we have God on our side, and, and we have answers to the problems of the world. But are we, are we offering those answers? These, this violence, these, these mass murderers who we vilify and who we learn way more than we probably ever wanted to know about them after uh, these events, they weren't born. They weren't born that way. They became that way for reasons. And I think God understands that. Now we're going to, as we have been, look, look at one of Jesus' parables. And it seems like a very kind of simple, harmless one. 
And yet, I think we may find that it is filled with potential power. Now, you have to understand, in Jesus' time, there were many people <clears throat> who were considered to be less than, who were considered to be unworthy, who were considered to be really uh, of no consequence. This includes certainly uh, <clears throat> the sick, the unwell, the lame. Uh, really, if you want to think of it in economic terms, it, it included those people who really were not seen as contributing to the economy in a positive way, but those who more drained the economy. Uh, so certainly the sick and infirm and, and the lame and the blind, uh, those who, who were not able-bodied, but it also included children before they were old enough to really help out and do positive uh, contributions. And it also included women. They were, they were not considered to be really worth much, except for childbearing. They were not allowed to witness in, in court cases because they were considered unreliable. Uh, and so it really, Jesus is really one of the first uh, who began this rebellion. He, he lifted people up. He lifted up those who society considered useless and unworthy. In fact, if you remember the feeding of the 5,000, it tells us in the scriptures that uh, <clears throat> there were 5,000 men there, not counting women and children. Because generally, they would, they would usually, when a rabbi was teaching, there would only be men there. So the fact that it even mentions that there were women and children there suggests that Jesus, unlike pretty much every other rabbi, allowed women and children to sit under his teaching. He was always lifting up those who were considered unworthy. And so we're today in Matthew chapter 18, starting at verse 10. Now Jesus, uh, just a few verses earlier, uh, had been talking to his disciples because they had been arguing amongst themselves who is going to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. And they even come to Jesus with that question. Who's going to be greatest in the kingdom? And Jesus unexpectedly calls up a child and he says if you don't change and become like this child you will not enter the kingdom of God so he's telling these adult males unless you become like this child who you consider to be unworthy you will not enter the kingdom and then he goes into this verse 10 take care that you do not despise one of these little ones. Now, because of what he's just said, we often tend to think that he's speaking about children. But really, that little ones, he, he has broadens this, this group. It's no longer just children, but it's all of these people who are considered less than, who are considered inconsequential, who people don't even take uh, seriously. All of those who are thought to be less than, take care that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you, in heaven, their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. Now here Jesus seems to be suggesting this idea of guardian angels, that, that we have these angels that watch over us. And he's saying, you need to be careful how you treat everyone. Because their angels are right there in God's very presence all day pleading on their behalf. And then you might notice, if, especially if you're using a pew Bible, uh, because in this translation it skips from verse 10 to verse 12. You'll find verse 11 in the footnotes. And verse 11 says, For the Son of Man came to save the lost. Now, Son of Man was a title we've talked about before that Jesus used most frequently for himself. The Son of Man came to save the lost. Now, I think we often, you know, we think of lost 
And especially in our day to day, we, we all generally have GPSs or, or cell phones that have GPS and we don't stay lost for very long. The idea of lost really isn't that worrisome to us. But really this word lost means for those that are, are perishing, those that are being destroyed, those that are, are just falling apart. The Son of Man came to save those who needed saving. He came to save those whose lives are a mess. That's who he came for. And Jesus says this in other places. A physician doesn't come to the, the people who are well. He comes for those who are sick. And so for those of us who, who think or believe, hey, I'm, I'm doing pretty well. I'm okay. I, I can handle this life. Well, I hate to say it, but Jesus didn't come for you. Jesus came for those who needed him. Those who needed a savior. What do you think? Think about it. If a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the 99 on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the 99 that never went astray. Now again, Jesus was using an illustration that would have been familiar to his audience. They all knew about shepherds. Probably most of them, if they weren't shepherds, they didn't hang out with shepherds because shepherds hung out with sheep and generally didn't smell that great. But, but they knew about shepherds. Now for us, that doesn't hold as much meaning. But let's just consider that you're saving for an item that you have, have just wanted for a long time. And it, it's a little out of your budget so you've been saving for the $1,000 price tag. You've been putting a little bit of money away every week, and you think you've saved up the full $1,000, and you, you get it out and you're, you're counting it out, and you only have 900. You know you saved 1,000. Where's that other $100? So you put the 900 back in the envelope and slip it in the drawer or wherever you keep it and you go searching for that other hundred dollars. And when you find it, oh, I left it in that other pair of pants. I found it! I found the hundred dollars! Woo! Found the hundred dollars, found the hundred dollars, found the hundred dollars. That's what he's talking about. You, you left the 900 in the drawer. You weren't worried about that. You knew where that was. You were worried about the 100 you didn't know what you did with. And when you find it, there's such joy and relief. That's what he's talking about. That, that you, re you rejoice over that which you have lost and found. And he's saying that's that's what it's like for God. When, when one of these who is lost, who is, who is perishing, who is being destroyed by life comes to know him, when, when he finds them. See, that's the other amazing thing about this is God comes looking for us. Because we are like that lost $100 would be to us. He's desperate to find us. And he comes looking for us. Now if you watch the news reports about some of these tragedies that have happened and, and those who have uh, perpetrated this violence, because they, they do deep background searches after the fact, and we find out all sorts of stuff about these people. And I don't know if you notice, but often it's a very similar story. They're, they're disconnected people. They're people that 
people look at and think they, they act a little odd. They, they don't have a lot of friends. There's, there's issues in their families. In some cases, in, in some of the school shootings, there's, there's uh, bullying. There are people that generally we walk right by. We don't notice, or if we notice, we don't want to get too close. We don't want to find out what's going on with them because we're not sure we want to know. We're not sure we want to get tangled up in the mess that their life seems to be. And yet, that's part of the problem. They're, they're often people who, who seem insignificant, who feel insignificant, who feel like they have no voice, who feel like no one notices them, who feel like they make no mark on culture. In fact, that's often how they get recruited. They're, they're promised that you can make a difference. You can help to change this world through death and destruction. But God offers them hope, love, community, support, encouragement. But how does he do that? He does it through us. And if we're not doing it, if we are not offering to this world love and encouragement and support and hope, who will? So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. It's not God's will. It's not God's will that even one of these little ones, one of these insignificant, one of these who perhaps don't make any positive contribution to our society, to our economy, but they are precious to God. You are precious to God. He loves you. He came for you. In a few minutes we will, we will gather around this table and remember how much he loves us. That he gave himself for us. That he died on a cross, poured out his blood for you. And for the least of these. Jesus also said, whenever you offer to someone a word of encouragement, visit them when they are sick or in prison, offer them a cup of cold water or clothing or food, when you do that for the least of these, you do it for him. You see, we are called to more than just sitting in our comfortable pews, singing hymns and praise songs, reading scripture. We, we are called to make a difference in this world. We're called to make a difference in people's lives, in individuals' lives, to help them to know that they are precious, that they are cared for, that they are loved, that they have a community to encourage and support them, even if they don't look like us, or act like us, or clean up as well as us. 
It's a great new song uh, on Christian radio. One of the lines is, I'm a mess and so are you. How true that is. We all are messy. If, if we live in this world, if we have relationships with any other person, our lives are messy. But God calls us to jump into the mess with other people. To hold one another up in the midst of the mess. Jesus came to us in the midst of our mess. He didn't ask us to clean up ahead of time. He just showed up in the mess for us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we, we give you thanks that you love us, that you have come and you have lived among us in the middle of our mess. And yet we, we still live in the mess. We still have messy lives. We find ourselves in difficult situations. And Lord, whether we recognize it or not, we need you. And certainly when we look at others and we look at the world around us, we recognize on some level that, that this world needs you. But in your amazing wisdom, you choose to work in this world through us. So Lord, we ask that you would help us, that you would fill us with your spirit, that you would give us the strength and the courage and the wisdom to reach out. We don't have to know all of the answers to life. We just need to know that whoever we come across, whoever we run into, is a precious creation of yours that needs to know you. Help us to know how to introduce you, that we might bring hope and community and love to a broken world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us stand together and sing our chorus, More Love, More Power. Words are on the insert in your bulletin.
You may be seated. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. This is the Lord's table, and he invites all those who trust in him to join him at this meal which he has prepared for us. Today we are going to receive communion by intinction, uh, so we will have servers going down the side aisles. Uh, please wait until they get to your pew, and then uh, you may file in to the center aisle and come and receive, and then return to your pews by the side aisles. If you are unable to come forward, uh, they will be happy to serve you there in the pew. Uh, so let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your amazing love. Uh, as humans, uh, the idea that the God of the universe, the God of all creation would come, would become one of us, would give himself for us, is really almost beyond our ability to comprehend. It is a love beyond our experience. And yet, it is what your word describes. And we trust that you truly do love us and you have come for us and you have poured out yourself for us. So Lord, we ask that you would bless this bread and help us to remind us of your body given for us and bless this cup that it might remind us of your blood shed for us and help us as we gather around this table to get some glimpse of how precious we are to you, but also help us to, to begin to see how precious others are to you as well. Give us your heart for this world, that we, that we might be inspired and propelled out into it to help others come to know you as we do. And Lord, as we gather, uh, we lift up those who are on our hearts and minds. Uh, today, we particularly want to lift up uh, our own uh, Jan Wooden as she prepares for surgery this month. And Lord, we just pray that you would be with her and fill her with your spirit and strengthen her. Uh, and uh, Lord, we just lift up uh, her surgeons and all those who will be involved in treating her. Give them the knowledge and the wisdom and the skills that they need. And we just pray that uh, that surgery goes well, that it is effective, uh, and that uh, she is able to get uh, feeling uh, back in her arm and uh, full use uh, of both of her hands. And uh, Lord, we just ask your blessing upon her. And uh, we just give you thanks for her and the way that she blesses us uh, each week uh, with the music ministry. Uh, and Lord, um, there are certainly many others on our hearts and minds uh, this morning that we lift to you trusting that you will be in each life, uh, in each situation, uh, that you will be providing uh, res resources needed uh, to bring healing and comfort and peace uh, and uh, direction uh, and whatever is needed for that situation. Uh, and Lord, we also offer ourselves to you uh, that if you can use us to be your presence, uh, to, to bring words of, of comfort or healing hands, uh, Lord, that you would fill us with your spirit and send us. Uh, but Lord, we also give you thanks for the many blessings that you pour out upon us each and every day. Uh, help us to always be aware of your miracles around us uh, and of your work around us, uh, that we might join you in that. And Lord, we lift all of these prayers to you in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we remember that on the night he was betrayed, Jesus sat around the table with his friends, with his disciples, and he shared the Seder meal. And after supper, he took the bread, and he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given for you. Take and eat, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, 
He took the cup. And he blessed it. And he gave it to them, saying, This is the cup of not the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. This is the Lord's table, and he invites all those who trust in him to join him at this meal which he has prepared for us. Today we are going to receive communion by intinction, uh, so we will have servers going down the side aisles. Uh, please wait until they get to your pew, and then uh, you may file in to the center aisle and come and receive and then return to your pews by the side aisles. If you are unable to come forward, uh, they will be happy to serve you there in the pew. Uh, so let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your amazing love. Uh, as humans, uh, the idea that the God of the universe, the God of all creation would come, would become one of us would give himself for us is really almost beyond our ability to comprehend. It is a love beyond our experience. And yet, it is what your word describes. And we trust that you truly do love us and you have come for us and you have poured out yourself for us. So Lord, we ask that you would bless this bread and help us to remind us of your body given for us and bless this cup that it might remind us of your blood shed for us and help us as we gather around this table to get some glimpse of how precious we are to you but also help us to, to begin to see how precious others are to you as well give us your heart for this world that we, that we might be inspired and propelled out into it to help others come to know you as we do. And Lord, as we gather, uh, we lift up those who are on our hearts and minds. Uh, today we particularly want to lift up uh, our own uh, Jan Wooden as she prepares for surgery this month. And Lord, we just pray that you would be with her and fill her with your spirit and strengthen her. Uh, and uh, Lord, we just lift up uh, her surgeons and all those who will be involved in treating her. Give them the knowledge and the wisdom and the skills that they need. And we just pray that, uh, that surgery goes well, that it is effective, uh, and that uh, she is able to get uh, feeling uh, back in her arm and uh, full use uh, of both of her hands. And uh, Lord, we just ask your blessing upon her. And uh, we just give you thanks for her and the way that she blesses us uh, each week uh, with the music ministry. Uh, and Lord, um, there are certainly many others on our hearts and minds uh, this morning that we lift to you, trusting that you will be in each life, uh, in each situation, uh, that you will be providing uh, resources needed to, to bring healing and comfort and peace uh, and uh, direction uh, and whatever is needed for that situation. Uh, and Lord, we also offer ourselves to you uh, that if you can use us to be your presence, uh, to, to bring words of, of comfort or healing hands, uh, Lord, that you would fill us with your spirit and send us. Uh, but Lord, we also give you thanks for the many blessings that you pour out upon us each and every day. Uh, help us to always be aware of your miracles around us uh, and of your work around us, uh, that we might join you in that. And Lord, we lift all of these prayers to you in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we remember that on the night he was betrayed, Jesus sat around the table with his friends, with his disciples, and he shared the Seder meal. And after supper, he took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Take and eat, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave it to them, saying, This is the cup of not the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. 
might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for your blood poured out for us. As you have given yourself for us, fill us with your spirit that we might live our lives for you. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The ushers will now come forward. We will continue our worship with the giving of our tithes and offerings. If you are a guest or visitor with us, please don't feel obligated to put anything in the plate. Your presence among us is gift enough.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the greatest gift of all, your Son, Jesus. And we ask that you would accept these humble offerings that we bring back to you. Bless them and multiply them and use them to further your gospel in this world. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join hands for the benediction. Friends, God loves you. So go out in God's power and in God's love to love those who feel unloved, to stand beside those who are lonely, to gird up those who need strength, to love all whom you come across as much as God does. And do it all in Jesus' name. Amen.